There's an attempted prison escape in this film that conveniently requires you to take off your shirt as part of the Conven- prison escape. Conveniently. <laughs> so, <laughs> what kind of machinations were there in the writer's room like, wait, I have it. This is why I've got to take off my shirt. And was there consideration <laughs> that John maybe never needed to wear a shirt this entire film? You could have gone to that route. To be fair, to be fair, we wanted to flood the cell but there was nothing to flood the cell with. So it was creative problem solving in the moment. So yes, that's what happened. And you know, everybody wins, everybody wins. Everybody wins, everybody wins. wins. (laughs) Congrats on the new movie, man. I knew from our experience, I never wanted to cross you, but I officially now know having seen this guy. (laughs) This is the guy that not only sets fire to the car, but he gets in the car. So now I know what kind of psychopath I'm working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John ain't got it all. He 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 a little <laughs> off on this one, but rightfully so. It's a role that, you know, I've always dreamed of playing. You know, it's it's the movie that I watched as a kid growing up, you know, being like, you know, I want to do that one day, you know, especially from, you know, playing in Tom Clancy's, you know, uh uh universe uh, Rainbow Six video game growing up. So when this project kind of came around, you know, it had all the bones of a cool origin story, you know. So to be able to kind of give it a fresh take and make it a little more modern and represent the world that we live in today, it was something I had to jump at. You've made a point out of you know, carving out a space for roles that sometimes aren't defined by the color of their skin, of the character's skin, right? And like this character traditionally has been a white guy. I'm curious, like, how do you think this story changes given that you're playing this role in 2021? You know, I think the stakes of a character, the situations that he that he's in has to be a little bit more mindful. You know, there's, there's a moment when he gets into the car, you know, the burning car. And he gets out of a car with his hands up and his cops around. I mean, that's that's a loaded situation, you know. And while yep. we're on that day, we're shooting that day, you know, it's a conversation that I'm having with the director, you know, with the producers. Like, listen, we got to make this make sense because right. in today's day, if he gets out of that car, he's probably getting shot, you know. Yeah. Re- like, re- yep. like regardless. So just we could just leave it at that. So, so you see when he gets out of the car, he's like, don't, don't, don't shoot, don't shoot on military. You know what I'm saying? Immediately hands up, you know, he's, 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 he's trying to be as submissive as possible because we still wanted to play the element that it was a possibility that he could have got shot, you know? And I think that at its core, uh, you know, in, in situations like that throughout the film, you know, it doesn't have to be beaten over, over the head. It doesn't have to try to be as subtle as, as possible, but you know, that's, I guess, one of the ones I guess that immediately stands out when it comes to that question. You talk about Tom Clancy's world. Uh, you know, I grew up with the, the Tom Clancy movies and the books. Does this movie happen if you're not a gamer? I know you grew up a an anime fan, a comic book fan, a game a gamer. Does this movie happen if you're not playing Rainbow Six as a kid? Ooh, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But maybe it still does because I, I mean, I I, I want to say that I'll still probably be a gamer and I'll probably still love action movies and 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 the right. the the kid in me would would want to you know live out my my childhood like fantasies of being able to do my own stunts you know like watching Blade and you know all the Tom Cruise movies the Jason Bournes and and you know the Michael Jai Whites and Spawn and, and Jackie Chan <laughs> and Jet Li and all these guys that I watched growing up was like man okay. I want to do that one day. It's your so turn, this, yeah. This is, this, is, this is the first one for me. This is the first time I've talked to you since being named the sexiest man alive. And I can tell even over Zoom, you're sexier than ever. Congratulations. Aw, see, stop it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Keep going. What'd you say? <laughs> I was talking to uh, our mutual buddy, Tessa Thompson, recently, and she was relishing the idea of giving you crap once she gets on the set of Creed 3. Yeah. Uh, who among your friends kind of hit you up and kind of aroused you? Was it, you know, did Jamie Foxx and Miles Teller, did everybody come out of the woodwork? I mean, who didn't? I mean, it's one of those things that it's a gift and a curse. As soon as you get it, it's good for like that moment, you know, when your mom calls you, one of your aunts and everybody's like, oh my God, baby, I'm so proud of you. Yes, y'all, yeah, yeah. And then you get the group <laughs> chats and the text messages from, everyone else and everybody becomes a comedian at that point you know so it, it's it's really one big roast for the entire year uh so I, I that's what i've been living with lately and i'm pretty sure tessa saved all the good stuff for uh yeah. when i'm gonna direct her in creed 3 so i'll make sure to have her at 4 a.m call times for the first couple of weeks so we'll <laughs> we'll we'll work it out for as long as you've been acting, especially in the last few years, you know, you've been, you know, you've been touted as like, you know, you're the next Denzel, you're the next Tom Cruise, et cetera. You, you've been working with Denzel lately, the last few months. Talk to me about what it's like to work 
one-on-one -on -one with this guy that's been so influential to you you and so many actors. What are you getting out of the experience of, of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Denzel? I mean, honestly, it's a dream come true. It's one of those things where, you know, he's so prepared. It's a master class of like character development, preparation and approach. You know, people love, love D for, you know, for the roles that he plays but they have no idea about the process that he goes through every day. You know, I think they would fall in love with him even more if they knew like, you know, like how dedicated he is to the craft. And, you know, as somebody who grew up watching his movies and inspired by him to be able to get that mentorship, you know, and those lessons and all those little gems, those Denzelisms, you know, <laughs> are, are, uh, are priceless and things that I'll take with me for the rest of my, you know, my, my career and my life in general, man, he, he's a, uh, you know, he's a great guy. So, so especially, you know, now that I'm moving on to directing next, he would, you know, be extra gracious with information, you know, yeah. tell me things to look out for. Think about this when you're in prep. Think about that when you're in prep. You know, maybe you ever you ever thought about doing it like this, recommend people. It was, it was a, yeah, it's been, it's been a great, it's been a great time. And I think the movie that we shot is really good also. So it's, uh, nice. I, I think we, uh, I think, I think we got something special on that one too. It's been a traumatic year for, for all of us in different ways. And, and on a personal note for you, you knew him much more than I did, but we all were connected with Chadwick and, you know, my condolences to you, man. It's, it's still shocking that we lost him. I know for me watching Ma Rainey and Black Panther again mm -hmm. in recent months and the five mm -hmm. floods has been a different experience. Has, have you watched those movies? Have you watched Black Panther again? Have you watched those? And, and I... what's it been like to watch your friend in those? I haven't watched Black Panther again. I mean, mainly pro if I wasn't in it, maybe I would be able to watch it. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I've watched Infinity War and, and Endgame, you know, a couple times actually since then. That was good. But more or less, Ma Rainey watching that project, knowing that it was his last time we get a chance to see him play a role is emotional. You know, he did such an incredible job. You see him giving everything. It just it, it hits so much harder. You know, it feels so much more powerful and, and, it, and it means so much. So, you know, I know, you know, he's been getting a lot of acknowledgement, you know, yeah. for that, you know, uh, and, and, you know, an Oscar or no Oscar, you know, I feel like, you know, he won, you know, because his legacy that he left behind and, you know, the lives that he touched, his family, his wife, and just being lucky enough to have worked with him and lucky enough to share that space, to have known him, it inspires me. No, no, I mean, yeah, the way he, he carried on in, in, in quiet, dignity, no one really knowing what was up. It's, it's just yeah. remarkable to look back on. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I know there's no collaborator that's more important to you than Kugler, who's meant so much to your career. In anyone else's hands, maybe the idea of another Black Panther might feel a little dodgy, but I assume you trust in his vision that he knows how to honor Chadwick's legacy and how to push this franchise forward and, and kind of honor the man, honor that world. If anybody's going to figure it out, it's uh, Ryan Kugler, Kevin Feige, you know, yeah. Nate Moore, Brad, everybody over there at Marvel, they'll figure it out. It's new territory to, to navigate. So yeah. so I, I, I have full confidence that they're going to uh, find the right balance, you know, on how to how to move forward and, and honor and respect Chadwick. What's Ryan saying to you as you approach your first directing effort? He's got to be a shoulder you're leaning on as you get on that set. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, you know, lucky enough for me, he's, you know, he's, I got him as a producer on that, you know, right. so just, you know, preparation, prep, 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 prep. You can't over prepare. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't over prepare. And he said, trust your instincts. You know, I think trusting my instincts is uh, something that he reinforces. And yeah, man, I mean, every, everybody has, you know, that full confidence in me from what they say, or they can just be completely <laughs> lying and just, you know, not want to break the news to me, but one way or another, we're going to find out. So we'll figure that out real soon. You'll, you'll get there. And you're excited for the journey Adonis is going to go on. Yeah, the I'm, really ex I'm really excited, man. It's become more personal to me. The more I develop it, the themes are starting to reveal itself in a real way. I have incredible actors that are attached along with our cast that uh, of familiar faces that, that we're used to seeing. I think we got something special. You know, I think we got something special. And I know everybody says that about their baby and their project, but you know, just carrying on that legacy moving forward, you know, I, th I think it's going to be something that a lot of people uh, can, can, can connect with. Yeah. Well, I know you wouldn't take this on lightly. It's a, it's a big deal to make the jump behind the camera. You don't want to screw it up. So I know you're going to, you're going to oh, be yeah, ready. Gonna, oh, I'm not going to be the one to screw it up. It ain't going to be me. <laughs> 
No, 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 no. They're gonna look at me like, oh, that was Mike's movie. That's right. When he tried to do that whole directing thing. Like, no, no, no. I, I'm as, as best as I, I can, I'm not, I'm not uh I'm not gonna be that guy. For about a decade, we've been uh having these kind of interviews where you duck and dodge a portion of my questions. So here's where here's where we do so this, it. So this is we're going jump, we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna do it. So I, okay, I think I've even mentioned this in, in years past. I mean, there's been talk about you as Superman, obviously. Mm-hmm. Tana Hesse Coates is now officially on board to write <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Mike, Mike, your chair. Oh, what's up? Mike, what's up? What's up? that's what's very un Superman hey. behavior. Nah, Superman just... would never slouch in his seat. Uh, what do you, do you know, Tana Hesse Coates? Have you talked to him about yeah, Superman? Yeah, well, you know, he, you know, he was responsible for the reboot of the uh, Black Panther. You know, oh, of course, books that, that yeah, right. we, yeah, of course. Uh, that, yep. that Ryan worked closely to adapt, and he's an incredible writer. And, and yeah, I know him for sure. You know, I'm flattered to be a part of all these conversations, you know, and rumors. And you are, you know, better than anyone else, like how many things I've been rumored to to play. You know what I'm I saying? It's yeah. it's a lot. So uh, <laughs> there's there's but so much time in the day, in days throughout the year. It's just flattering to know that people still, you know, think of me in that type of way to be able to play these characters and and uh, and want me to to some degree. So uh, I'll just, you know, leave it at that, I guess. But how about just from a fan perspective? The I love the hands up just from a fan's perspective. Like, <laughs> just, just, okay, just from a, okay. No, but keep, <laughs> in all seriousness, the power of the image of a black Superman is going to be yeah. remarkable. Whether it's you or somebody else, that's undeniable. I mean, that's, that's an interesting and cool place to be in our culture. And it's going to be a moment, whether it's you or someone else. No, I mean, that. I think I think from that perspective, yeah, it is. You know, it's cool to see a, a powerful black man in a heroic character and be larger than life and being super. You know, I think it's symbolic on a lot of different levels, you yeah. know. Uh, so so in that regard, yeah, that that would be that would be pretty cool. You're pretty pr- private, generally speaking, and I'm not one to pry on, on the personal life, but on Instagram, you've been a little bit more open lately. You've been kind of like open about your relationship. Has that been a big kind of like adjustment? Like, cause that, that's a choice. That's a, you don't have to do that. Can you give me a sense of just sort of why you're kind of opening yourself up a little bit? Of why now is the time to do that? I have been, you know, extremely, you know, private and I am still, you know, very private. I think there was a part of me that wanted to stop the speculation you know, of everybody, you know, prying to get to know and trying to find out this and that. And it was just like, look, this is what it is. I'm happy. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I'm a grown ass man, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm and I'm living and I'm living I'm living my life, you know, and uh, and I'm enjoying it, you know, and I'm and I appreciate who I'm with and I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, and I yeah. think this, you know, this pandemic, you know, and I think the, you know, this the loss of uh of, of uh, you know, of life and people and time, you start to, you know, prioritize, you know, and, and, yep. and you figure out what's important and, and you got to live your life, man, and you got to enjoy yourself, you know? Um, so, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. And uh, I'm still private. I'm still very, you know what I'm saying, there, but, yep. you know, wanted to just, you know, put that out there, sort of put everybody at rest and, right. and let, let people know kind of what it is and, and then move on. You've come a long way, even in, in the years I've known you, let alone since you've started acting. Do you ever think back to the early days, like the first time you were recognized on the street um, to where you are now as like, you know, you're in rarefied territory to say the least. Do you think about how far you've come and does that give you some perspective? I think my close friends, you know, sometimes, you know, bring it up or some of my team that's been with me for a really long time, you know, uh, we might be in a situation that, you know, I still kind of, you know, look like, is this really happening right now? And then people are like, yeah, duh. And I'd be like, huh, what? <laughs> so I, I'm sometimes I'm late to the party as far as like catching up to to um, I guess the perception of me in certain 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 areas. Uh, you know me, I'm, I'm a do the work guy, you know, and, uh, right. and 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 keep pushing. But I am extremely blessed and fortunate to be able to. Uh, you know, to, to be somebody that people do look up to and hopefully I am inspiring, you know, future generations and, uh, across the board to do great things for themselves and to challenge themselves and uh, to push themselves uh, forward. But yeah, you know, I've been doing this 20 years, so it's a blessing to be able to still do what I do and, and, um, and do it at the top of my game.